Hey guys, welcome back to another video. It's your girl Michelle. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you post hysterectomy must haves. Of course, after having a major surgery, you want to make sure that you have all the necessities and the things that will help you and aid into your road to recovery. And these things have really helped me. If you have been following me, then you know that I just had a total hysterectomy about six days ago. It was an up and down battle in the beginning for me because it was something that I've never went through. I'm so grateful to be sitting here today. Each and every day has been getting better. Hence why I want to do this video to help somebody else who may be on the same journey as myself and share with you the things that have helped me along the way. So I was feeling good enough to be able to shower on my own and actually put on something nice that makes me feel good as well as try to slick my hair. Even though I'm still recovering and I'm not my best, I still wanted to be able to give you content. I know there's somebody out there right now who needs some type of advice. So I'm going to share with you all of the things that have helped me along the way. So if you guys are excited, make sure you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'm going to jump right into it. So the first must have that has been really beneficial for me after my surgery has been using ice packs in the hospital they had really nice ice packs i wish that i could have took them home i was able to pick these up at a local store and it feels really good after your surgery being that your stomach is very sore and swollen the cold feels really good and it's really soothing on my stomach so i literally kept these on my stomach pretty much i still do it you can also alternate between the ice packs and the heating pad as well, but I didn't really like the heat. If you're feeling any type of discomfort on your lower back, then maybe this would help, but I just didn't want any type of heat. My body was already just feeling a lot. I was sweating, so the cool ice packs are better, but I think both of these are good to have just in case. Second must have is tea, and the reason why I got tea is because after you have your surgery, your voice and your throat is really, really scratchy. I know for me, my throat was very painful and I was coughing due to them putting the tube down my throat. So it just really was uncomfortable to swallow, to drink anything. So I felt like drinking tea really helped soothe my throat. My first favorite tea is the ginger and probiotic. Ginger is really good for your stomach, especially if your stomach's upset and it's not feeling good. So that definitely was clutch. I also got the Yogi Breathe Deep, supports the respiratory health. And this is really good for your lungs as well. The next must have is ginger ale. You guys know ginger ale is vital after having a hysterectomy because your stomach just feels crazy. I know my stomach just felt crazy. It felt upset. It just did not feel good. It was just a different type of sensation that I felt. I was facing a lot of nausea and discomfort. Ginger ale is going to be your best friend. I drink at room temperature and kind of flat following up with Zofran. So before your procedure, you're probably going to have a pre-op visit with your doctor. If you can suggest that your doctor calls you in some Zofran because all the medications that they had given me, I guess my body just was overwhelmed with it and my stomach was so turny. I actually vomited after my procedure and I feel like it was the medicine. Zofran has literally saved my life. I was nauseous all the way up until literally yesterday. This is vital to have. Um, it's a very small pill that dissolves underneath your tongue and it works instantly. So definitely want to keep this on hand because I'm somebody who hates to throw up. So yeah, this definitely need the next must have is to get some, some methicone, also known as gas X because after your surgery, you are going to accumulate a lot of air and gas because during the procedure, your stomach is pumped up so that the doctors can see inside and do what they need to do. But honey, listen, you need to have this on hand because gas can make you feel like you're dying. Gas can travel all throughout your body and it was traveling, honey. It was in my stomach, it was in my arm, it was in my shoulders and I was just belching. It was very, very uncomfortable because I couldn't really pass the gas because my stomach was so sore and I felt like I had to push to actually release it. But taking the Gas X really helped me. It's fast acting. This one is extra strength and it comes with 18 chewable tablets. The taste is not bad at all. It's almost like chewing a peppermint. Once you're able to release that gas, it's so much relief in your stomach. The next thing that is really important to have and keep by your bedside is saltine crackers. Like I said, your stomach is going to be feeling very weird and your stomach may feel very sick and uncomfortable. Being that you need to take medication, you don't wanna ever take medication on an empty stomach because now you're gonna have a double issue. So saltine crackers are really, really helpful when you don't really have an appetite, but yet you still need to take your medicine. This will definitely coat the lining of your stomach, preventing any type of sickness or vomiting or anything that could occur if you take medicine on an empty stomach. Following up with some soup, if you can't really stomach any type of like chewing or anything, just drink the broth, chicken noodle soup, whatever soup that you really like, but 
I started off with this because it's very light. It's clear liquids. And I didn't want anything too heavy on my stomach, like I said, because it was feeling very, very, very sick. So what I did was I just drank the broth. And any type of warm sensation going in your stomach always makes it feel better. This is very important. Make sure to take your medication as directed. I was given a shitload of medication and I was just like, what am I supposed to do with this? I don't like medicine. I don't want to take all of this. So certain medications I was opposed to and I was just like, it's just not for me. But take your medicine as directed and as needed. Don't be like me. I skipped a few hours and that's when the pain was intense. You don't want the pain to creep back. You want to like stop it before it does. So make sure that you're taking your medicine as directed and as needed because the pain is real. Being that I'm a natural person and I didn't want all that medication in my body, I really stuck with ibuprofen and Tylenol and that really kind of helped me. Of course, the medication that they gave me in the hospital was something that was beyond me and had me like in la la land and I didn't like that feeling. Once the medication wore off from the hospital, I just stuck to the basics, to the things that I knew. They worked for me, but two weeks is on. If you have the other painkillers and the other medications that you feel like you just have to have, Make sure you take it and do what you have to do because that pain is no joke. Next two things are very vital, okay? I cannot stress this. All of these are important, but these two really are important. Going into your surgery, again, when you have your pre-op with your doctor, ask for any type of stool softener. My doctor called me in Colace, all different type of stool softeners, and I also got Marilex. If you do not know, when you go under anesthesia, it literally paralyzes like your bladder, your bowel, everything. So it makes it really hard for you to have a bowel movement afterwards. That was one of my biggest fears because constipation is very, very, very painful to the point where you're going to shed a few tears. So if you start taking this before your procedure, then your body's already going to get used to it and it won't be as painful. I started taking the Colace literally a week before, uh, literally a week before my procedure. And then once I came home from the hospital after about two days, my doctor asked me if I had had a bowel movement and I still didn't. So he told me to try the Miralax. And after drinking just one six ounce cup of this with any type of drink of your choice, I literally felt my stomach rumbling and I was like, okay, it's go time. I did feel a little discomfort in my rectum, I guess, because of the surgery. So I was a little afraid to push because I was like, I can't strain my muscles. Oh my God, is this going to hurt? But listen, it didn't. It wasn't painful at all. I did have to take my time, but it literally came out with ease. And that was a big relief to me. And it felt so much better in my stomach. So my advice to you is to start taking a stool softener maybe a week before your surgery. Don't do it after your surgery because you want the medicine to be already working in your body another must have is this medication that my doctor also called in for me it is called paradium and you can talk it over with your doctor but the reason why my doctor wanted me to take this medication is because it helps with urinary tract infections it prevents um it's kind of like an uh i don't know how to say it, it kind of just like like numbs your like bladder area so that you don't feel any discomfort after having your surgery because again they will put a catheter inside of you and sometimes you can get an infection due to the catheter and also you can experience discomfort when urinating i know for myself the first four days it was literally burning when i would pee and i was afraid to pee because i did not like that burning sensation but taking this medication has really made it much easier for me like i said taking the medication made it so much better. Everything is functioning, everything is coming back slowly and it's such a big relief. The next must have is a spirometer and this is something that the hospital should give you before you get discharged. And what this is, it's basically like a breathing machine that helps to open up your lungs to prevent you from getting any type of fluid or mucus buildup that can turn into pneumonia. Like I said, after getting the tube down your throat and stuff like that, um, I developed like a cough, a bronchial cough, almost as if I was catching a cold. But that's just the fluid and stuff from, you know, them putting the tube down my throat. So what this does is it really helps to open up the airwaves and keep your lungs open so that nothing builds up. I've been using this every single day. And what you do is you just inhale it a few times and see how high you can go. You hold your breath for a few seconds and then you release it. The next must have is water. Water should be your best friend. Water is key to everything. Water is going to hydrate you, especially after losing blood especially after surgery especially after your body going through such a traumatic experience you want to make sure that you're 
re um you're re-putting and refilling your body back up with the fluid that you may have lost especially for myself because i was vomiting so that just made me feel even more sick and even more weak and even more dehydrated so water is something that you should definitely keep by your bedside so that you can just stay hydrated your kidneys can keep flushing out and you can also flush all of the medication and stuff that they gave you in the hospital i also have really been drinking a lot of gatorade i have the red i love vitamin waters i've been i've been alternating between gatorades vitamin waters and cran grape because you know cranberry juice is really good for urinary tract infections and stuff like that so i've been making sure that i've been staying hydrated you hear me the next must have is a abdominal binder this is something else that i was given in the hospital from the nurses to take home with me and what this does is it basically you wrap it around your stomach and it's supposed to just be like a compression basically to hold you in and give you that security to kind of help with the discomfort that you're feeling because again your stomach just feels crazy after well i'm my stomach just felt really crazy afterwards and i didn't want to feel what i felt so i find that wearing the abdominal binder helped hold everything in and it kind of took the pressure off of the gas that i was experiencing so when laying down i would wear it but it would be looser and then when i would get up to use the bathroom or something like that i would put it on i would just tighten it a little more just to give me more stability just to hold me in a little bit more so i didn't feel so much pain so a couple of videos where a lot of people didn't really like the binder but i feel like this has really helped me be able to get up and be a little more active and mobile when i have this on so um i'm not wearing it today because i feel way better but in the first few days i feel like this is definitely vital to have the next must have is a body pillow I actually had this when I was pregnant but I found that using this after my surgery made such a difference in how I slept most of my days I was sleeping on my left side that was the only side that I didn't feel so much pain so just having the body pillow like pressed a little bit against my stomach and I put the other end in between my legs so that my knees were kind of bent it really took the pressure off once I felt a comfortable position that's how I was able to go to sleep so just having something to hold on to for security and just to kind of hold my stomach in it just made it feel so much easier next you want to make sure that you're sleeping in very loose clothing get loose pajamas even if you don't want to sleep in anything fine less is best you don't want to wear anything with tight elastic around the stomach so make sure that your clothes are very loose sleep in like an oversized t-shirt a nightgown even if you do have pajama pants make sure that they're very stretchy and make sure that they're below your incisions because you don't want anything to irritate it being that you have stitches your body's very sensitive and tender this must haves are some chapstick okay let me just tell you a quick funny story going into my surgery i made it very clear to the doctor like listen i don't play when it comes to my lips I don't want my lips to look chapped, especially if I'm going to be vlogging or trying to vlog. My lips need to be moisturized. And again, when you have surgery and you're sick and you're not feeling good and you're not able to eat like you normally would and you're not able to drink like you normally would, our body can get dehydrated and our lips will get dry. So keep some chapstick on deck. Keep it right next to you so that you can just put it on whenever you feel like your lips are dry. And I made sure that even though I was on them drugs in the hospital, I told the nurse, can you give me some type of chapstick she definitely understood the assignment and she came in with a q-tip and some vaseline and your girl's lips was popping next thing that i recommend that you get invest in a table like a table tray mine is over there i can't lift it right now but they have them on amazon they're literally like little bed trays that you can just set um set on top of you on your lap when you're in your bed it's so beneficial because you can put your medicine there you can put your your soup your drinks your computer your tablets whatever you need and you don't have to worry about getting out of your bed to try to sit at a table because you feel so bad i'll also link it down below if you want to check it out the next essential is to keep a box of tissues the only reason why i really needed the tissues is because like i said after having the surgery my nose was really stuffy i was coughing um i don't know if it's because i was crying i don't know what it was but my nose stayed stuffy for a good couple of days definitely keep a box of tissues by you. the next essential that you should have is to have your charger and make sure that your phone is charged so if you have a socket close by your bed or it's not close by your bed try to get like an extension cord and make sure that it's plugged up and your charger is there so that your phone does not die in case you are in the house by yourself in case of an emergency and you need to make a phone call call the doctor call 911 call any of your family members your phone will be right by your bedside you don't have to worry about trying to get out of your bed to look for your phone and you want to make sure that your phone is charged all the time the next thing that was vital and helpful to me is to have my bible i have been in the bed for a few days which has made me go crazy because you guys know 
if you're anything like me i'm very active and this is something that made me just sit my behind down and i was just not happy about it but it is what it is and your girl just had to ride the waves once i started to feel better and i started to get like antsy and i wanted to get up and move around i found that just reading my bible reading positive things really made me feel better made my mind feel better it helped me get out of the funk that i started to feel about not being able to do stuff for myself or for my kids reading my bible reading my book and actually journaling has really helped me to keep myself busy to keep myself occupied if you're not really into reading or anything try to get like a crossword puzzle do things that keep you occupied throughout the day find a show on netflix and you can just watch all the seasons it'll make time go by really fast trust me just to keep your mind occupied too much time by yourself makes you overthink and then sometimes we can develop unwanted emotions that make us feel really bummed and the goal is to get out of this heal so that we can continue and have a better quality of life and the last must have is faith and support if you are not a believer that is fine but i just feel like having faith along this journey has played a big part in my healing believing that everything's going to work out for me everything's going to be just fine i'm, I'm going to get better every single day and i'm not going to get better just like that by snapping my fingers but just believing has really made me feel so much better because I know God is the only healer. God is the one who has brought me out of this situation. Support is really important as well. Having somebody to be there with you and for you. The first couple of days is vital to have somebody be there with you to help you because you may not be able to do the things that you would normally be able to do and that will make your process so much harder and make you feel worse because you're already feeling in pain and now you don't have somebody to be there to take that load off of you. So I feel like it's really important to have somebody stay with you for at least the first 72 hours, whether it's a friend, cousin, aunt, uncle, spouse, mother, father, uncle, somebody just needs to be there with you to monitor you and to help you during this time. I'm grateful for you guys with all the support. Also grateful for my family who has been here with me every step of the way. Phone call is just as good, a text is just as good, and I've been receiving abundance amount of love, which has really made me feel so special because in times like this when you really need the help and support, those who show up are those who matter and those are the ones you need to keep in your corner. This pretty much wraps up my post hysterectomy must haves. I wanted to do this video again to be able to help somebody you know this is not an easy journey it's a very life-changing surgery and i will continuously bring you guys on this journey with me and let you guys know as i progress hope you found this video helpful if you did give it a thumbs up make sure you subscribe and if you're going through this take it one day at a time don't be too hard on yourself it does get better and just know you're not alone